more the assurance that she seeks. My Lords, when the European Convention was promulgated in 1950, when it was enshrined in 1953, this country already had strong and trusted laws in place that guaranteed free speech, religious pluralism, habeas corpus, and so on. Will my noble and learned friend, the Minister, confirm that charters of this kind are not so much about the creation of new rights as about appointing a different set of people to arbitrate rights or to uh, come and interpret between competing claims? Can he indeed identify any specific advantages that have come to this country as a result of our adherence to the European Convention? My noble friend is quite right that the rights in this country go back. I won't, I won't um, uh, as a cliche, invoke Magna Carta, but it is perfectly plain that um, this country has a long and proud history of freedoms. They weren't called human rights, but they were called freedoms uh, over very many years. And when the Human Rights Act 1998 uh, was introduced, the government of the day described it as, as bringing rights home. And I would agree with my noble friend that uh, they never actually left in the first place. Uh, freedom of speech is to be a central pillar uh, of the UK uh, 